So the guys really I'm closest with, they look, they're like, yeah, well, good luck. You know, um, but they said, you know, just get, it's just football. Um, you know, it's like coming here as a freshman. Yeah. You know, it's a little different. Guys are older, but it's just, at the end of the day, it's still just football. Jake, what's the mindset when you, when you go on draft? I mean, is there a chip that you take with you or um, is there an edge that you have to have? Yeah, you got, I mean, you some teams didn't pick you for a reason, and you got to figure out what that is. And then you got to take that, uh, critique it, and take it with you up to Green Bay. Um, show the teams, you know, they made a mistake not drafting you, and you, know, you don't want to act too crazy out there and act like, you know, you're some nut job that wish you would have got drafted, but you definitely got to have a chip on your shoulder. So I think, you know, that'll help me up there. They don't, they don't hand out free agent contracts like candy either, though. I mean. No, they, they only, yeah. And especially at Green Bay, I think we only had seven or yeah, eight. Yeah. So um, I was fortunate enough that they, I felt like they wanted me and uh, they thought I had a good shot of, you know, making an impact on their team. So I just got to go up and show them they made the right choice. How much do you think that the knee thing contributed to, to that, maybe not getting drafted? Um, it's hard to say. I, I, my agent was saying I know when you fail four or five, that's really not a good sign. It's just my knee was still kind of torn even when I got to the combine. Um, From the junior year? Well, I tore it my senior year. Okay. Um, after. Sure. But, uh, like, it, I think it was just something that's always going to be there. I mean, I was still able to run and work out, and I haven't been haven't had a felt pain in it. It's just some doctors thought it looked torn, some didn't. So, you know, some teams just weren't willing to take the waiver on my knee, Has it especially because I've done it two years in a row now. Has it been fixed? Yeah. yeah. It's just some, like, it's so minute that some people might think it's torn, and some people think it's just... I don't, I don't know. Just the way it shows up on the... Right. Yeah. So that's why, you know, a lot of the teams said it was all right, and some some just wouldn't even talk to me because of it. You seemed to run all right when Troy was throwing you the football. Right. That's what... I mean, at the end of the day, I was like, well, I, I feel fine, and I think, you know, I can't tell the difference in it, but I think two years in a row, and it still may be sh- showing, was probably didn't help me too much. What was it that you wondered if Thanks, Jake. Torn, Jake? My knee still. Okay. What, what in your knee, do you know? Uh, my meniscus. Okay. It's just what, from what I did in the season. Um, they thought, a couple teams thought it was still hurt and just not worth the risk. Green Bay, when he was a wide receiver or a tight end? Tight end. I'm actually, like, exact same size as all their tight ends. They're, none of them are, you know, there's no Jake Ballards walking around there that are 6'7", 280. I, I'm actually bigger than two of the guys on the depth chart. So it's perfect fit. Um, they were in the type of offense that, would suit me well, and that's what, that's what I was looking for to try to get in the NFL. So the ball's in my court now if I want to make that team. And I kept hearing it during the draft that's the way the NFL is going is to two de- tight ends control the middle of the field. Yeah. Are you getting in at the right time, I guess? Yeah. I wish my name you know, would have gotten called at the right time, but um, you know, it is what it is. I think I ended up in probably the best situation I could. You know, they got a good amount of tight ends on their team, but you know, they play a lot. Last year, they, I think they had six on the 53 and roster, so it's there. It's there for me to make it, but you know I just got to perform. What was it like training for this with, with Mick? I didn't stay here. Oh, you didn't, oh no, sorry, you were. Gone. I was in Arizona. Yeah, okay. so that was lo- that was nice. Yeah, you know, good weather, and I was out there with Reed and um, right. a couple like a couple guys from around the country. So I I heard it was hard here, but I don't, I don't know. Seeing Reed though, at least get his name called at the end was that a good thing to. Yeah, I think it was bittersweet for him. I mean, obviously, you know, get him getting drafted, but, yeah. you know, I think he had high, high hopes of going probably in the third or fourth yeah, round. Yeah. I mean, that's really what I think what everyone thought. But, um, you know, that just shows how crazy the draft is. You just really never know. Yeah. There's guys getting called from playing tackle that Reed said he'd never even, never even heard, never of, heard of. You know, looked like <laughs> high school film out there. And yeah. I guess, you know, it's just it is what it is. And there's nothing you can really do about it. So. Yeah. How surprising is that to you, though, that so few of you guys ended up getting drafted after the, the year that you all had? Um, yeah, very. I mean, I know a lot of us were going into expecting definitely to at least get a name call at some point. You know, nothing fifth, sixth, seventh round. You thought at least, you know, more than three of us would. But um, I guess we just got to all go prove ourselves. When Ohio State, we always have a lot of guys who go undrafted, who stick around in the NFL. I can think of... You know, five or six guys off the top of my hands since I've been here are still in the NFL, didn't get drafted. I mean, I think they're doing pretty well for themselves. So, you know, I'm not, I was upset, you know, during the draft and after it, but now I'm kind of moved on and ready to, you know, start this new chapter. What's your first impression of the Green Bay organization here? 
yeah. top notch. That's, I mean, that's what I heard. That's why my agent wanted me to go there. Um, they just treat, you know, they're, they're one of the few programs that you know, are pretty loyal, you, as loyal as you can be in that business, you know. Um, I've, we've had a couple of Buckeyes up there telling me this is the place to be, and their type of offense is just what something I need to be in with the open-ended offense, throwing a lot, and more receiving tight end is what they have there. So it's perfect for me. So there were, I think, 63 players from the SEC drafted and only 22 from the Big Ten. Do you think <laughs> is that a reputation thing or is that a reality thing? What do you, how do you um, look at that? Probably more of a reality thing. Um, you know, great players always doesn't mean, you know, your team's going to be great. Yeah. I think uh, Florida State had, like, you know, over double digits drafted or something like that, and what, they lose six, seven games? I don't know about that many, but they were number one in the country they going, and they ended up, up the and they didn't live up to the height. So, you know, we didn't get a lot of guys drafted, but it doesn't mean we weren't great college football players or a great team. Uh, I think, you know, potential in the NFL is way different than playing in, you know, um, the NFL. So, but that does, you know, is a little bit of a reality check there that they had 63, we only had 20 something. Yeah. But well, not much you can do about it. When it came to deciding where you would sign your free agent deal, <coughs> do you sit down with depth charts and, and look at the coaches, and or does your agent do it? A little bit of both. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's my decision where I want to go. Um, my agent will tell me what he th- feels is the best for me, um, looking at depth chart-wise and money-wise. And um, I just felt like Green Bay was the most like this place in the NFL, pretty loyal. And, uh, you know, they're, like I said, their type, the way they use their tight end is something that fits me perfect. So, we'll just, you know, they have a lot of guys in their depth chart, but... Besides their starter, there's not a lot of guys proven, so I just got to go in there and prove myself. Do you know how many other offers came in for you? Round belts? Um, yeah, I probably had 10 to 15 teams call. Um, some, I really thought the Seahawks, they, were gonna, they told me they were going to draft me in the end, but they just, they just didn't. They, they got me on that one. So, um, But, yeah, the Green Bay just seemed like, you know, like the right fit. Um, I guess we'll have to see. It kind of, you know, that sits in the back of your mind, like maybe I could have went here or there, but... And too late now. How disappointing is that? Do so you remember what it was like to, to have to make a team? I mean, it's been a long, obviously, you've been all the years. Uh, you're a top, probably a top pick. Not, I mean, middle school basketball was the last <laughs> time I really had to try to make a team, and I didn't really have to do those tryouts. I, yeah, maybe uh, elementary school trying out for our travel basketball team. You know, because high school, you didn't have to try out for anything. I mean, here, you had to try. I mean, you had to try to make if you wanted to play, but you really, you know, you were guaranteed a scholarship. Um, so, no, I haven't had to do this in a long time. Um, more pressure, but, you know, I, my friends who, they said they, they're on the teams, they've cut their fifth round draft pick. So, you know, even if you get drafted in the fifth round, there's still the same amount of pressure. You still got to go perform. And so at the end of the day, you know, unless you're getting drafted in the first three or four rounds, you know, you still got to go, go up there and, or go wherever you're going to perform because you could get cut at any day. What do you think you have to show them? Is there something like that? Um, to show, just show them I can make, not make plays, but be able to be a receiving tight end, um, get be able to get open, run fast, because they already told me that's what they like about me. They just, they just didn't see enough of it. You know, I didn't have enough uh, stats behind it to really push me through, so they just wanted to make sure I can really actually do some of the things I was showing on film. How disappointing is it to be told by a team we're going to draft you and then your name doesn't get called? Um, well, at that point, I didn't want my name called because I wanted to be able to choose where to go. And, you know, Seattle had already drafted a tight end. So I was, uh, I kind of, I mean, I, you know, getting drafted would have been cool, but I just kept on getting told, you know, at the end, during the seventh round, you just got to swallow your pride so you can pick where you want to go, best situation for you. And, you know, that's what ended up happening. So, I mean, I was kind of disappointed because, you know, you obviously want to see your name. And I was really, it was literally the pick right after Reed got drafted. I thought I was going to go, and I didn't. But at the time, I was pretty bummed. But looking back, it's probably what was best not to be called. Were you with friends and family, I take it, as you were going? Uh, my family and a couple friends were there because just the uncertainty of the day, I really didn't want to do anything. And But I guess, I mean, I, I guess after the, you know, I, after I got signed, people were real happy and started coming over. I was kind of still disappointed, so I was in a bad mood, but it was still fun. How, how are you going to draft a tight end who played receiver and I only had 14 catches? 
you know, um, that definitely didn't help. I think just not having a whole lot of stats really probably didn't help a whole lot. But you know, it has it's not going to stop I me. Mean, Jake Ballard, you know, has a Super Bowl ring from not having a lot of stats. So I just got to go up there and prove myself, really. And are you excited to go back to tight end? I mean, you have Ner- little I'm a little bit nervous because you know it's uh, it's not my natural position and. Um, I only played it for three years here, and as soon as I started getting the groove, I switched over. But, you know, their tight ends aren't power blockers. They're not going to go down there and ball anybody. So it's the type of situation I need to start at, and hopefully I can, you know, perfect pretty well. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but if you're implying that the way you were used wasn't necessarily to your benefit when it came to the draft, but you wouldn't change anything, right? Oh, no, never. Um, I, I moved a receiver to help the team, and... Yeah, I helped them as any way we could, and we went 12 and 0. So I could never complain about that. Um, you, don't, you could, you, there's just nothing I could have done about it. You know, we just weren't. It's not like I dropped 15 balls, 20 balls, and it's just all my fault. You know, it's just that's just the way, the, just the way the ball rolls. So um, I had to deal with it the way I can. Um, I got a 12 and 0 ring. I can't complain about that, and I'll have that forever. And I just got to make a career out of being an undrafted free agent.